This is a Solval SV07, and it is not an upgrade of the incredibly popular SV06. Let's just get that out of the way right now. When this clipperized i3 showed up with its V-rollers and adjustable sprung bed, I was ready to literally annihilate it. But then I saw the print quality, the print speed, and finally, the printer's price. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse, bringing you yet another 3D printer review. And man, was this an emotional roller coaster. Soval is a Chinese company that came onto my radar with my previous review of the SV06, an absolutely excellent budget 3D printer, which heavily borrows a lot of features from the Prusa Mark III, such as inductive bed leveling, linear rods, and direct driven extruder. But instead of being just a straight clone, Soval added their own flair, such as the unique planetary drive used in the extruder, and they kept the whole thing open source as well. So when they said, hey Angus, we're releasing a new 3D printer with Clipper called the SV07, forgive me, but I expected the SV06, but with some improvements and well, Clipper. The SV07 is not that. It's a completely different design, more reminiscent of an Ender 3 with the V rollers instead of linear rods, but in 2023 fashion, it has Clipper. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. Clipper is firmware that lets you control your 3D printer in all sorts of fancy ways, so you can print fast and do all of this from the comfort of your own computer through an interface like this. It's very nice to have. Assembly is much like any other Ender 3 style machines as well, and I feel it's a step back from the SV06 in some areas. It's not difficult by any means, but for example, I praised the SV06 for having these milled channels so that the gantry could be securely mounted with bolts from the side, but with the SV07, we're back to the fiddly method of holding the printer at a weird angle and bolting from the bottom up, like so many other budget i3s. Still, the rest of the assembly is quite straightforward with a new upgraded interface snapping into the bracket on the side and a top mounted spool holder with a bearing in it, not something you see every day. And while I found it does help when using cardboard spools, it can actually make plastic spools spin too freely, results in the filament tangling around the side of the printer as it prints. Mounted to the gantry is the planetary gear direct drive extruder and despite looking absolutely massive, it's the same as the SV06. Soval simply added this giant shroud to hold some LEDs in place and presumably provide a little bit of shielding from this thing. If you looked up afterthought in the dictionary, you would find this giant curtain fan blower thing. I can't quite tell if this part is resin 3D printed or has been injection molded with a rapidly made 3D printed mold, but despite its rough finish, this additional cooling fan has proven incredibly necessary, as you'll see later in the video. Being driven on V-rollers and not linear rods, it's important to check and maintain correct tension on all axes to minimize any slop. And from the factory, the print bed on my machine was completely loose. It's very easy to adjust using the eccentric nuts below some of the rollers, but something you'll have to periodically check and maintain. Belt tension is similarly important, and I noticed that the x-axis was super loose, but adjusting it using the little tension wheels is a breeze. And that's it, your SV07 is assembled and ready to go, but don't go printing quite yet. That bed needs serious leveling and calibration. Recently, I reviewed the BQ Huracan, which is basically this machine, clipper and Ender 3 sort of thing, and I lamented why they use springs as well as a bed leveling probe. It's kind of admitting that they don't trust their print beds to be remotely level enough to rigidly fix them in place, and it's odd to see here because the SV06 came with a rigidly fixed bed. Again, steps backwards. After testing this machine for some time, I actually discovered that they do include hard mounts in the box, so you can just mount the bed hard without springs. It's just these plastic tubes, so I'll probably fit them in future, but yeah, so we'll just fit them from the factory. I don't know why you've used springs here. It's a bit weird. Once your leveling is done, then you need to set that Z offset, which is where your first layer starts. This compensates for where the inductive probe is triggered, and it will move the nozzle down or up to make the first layer nice and accurate. And for mine, I had to bring it quite a fair bit down to make that first layer stick. My advice, use the old paper trick to bring it down close until you feel it just touch the paper, and then I'll adjust it for the first print little bit by little bit closer to ensure that the first layer is good with no gaps or bulging up. You also use the feeler gauge trick where you offset the value to the thickness of the feeler gauge, but I prefer too far away in this case rather than too close because these powder coated print surfaces are very easy to damage if you dive the nozzle straight into them. Or well, so I've heard anyway. Also, just quickly on that print surface, some people have reported that the painted areas pull away onto their models. 
I've seen this before on other print beds, but I haven't had that occur yet on mine, but definitely grab a spare just in case. In fact, any magnetic print service from any brand should work here. I use the Prusa Mark III print beds, which is smooth PEI, for my flexible print testing with no issue. I just wish they included guides to help you line the sheets up. With Printing Fast being the feature of the year, the SV07 comes preloaded with a 25 minute benchy. So I loaded up the tiny spool of white PLA provided and sent it. It's sliced at 0.2 millimeter layers, and for context, a similar print on the original Ender 3 would take around one and a half to two hours. So it's a significant speed increase. And that's all thanks to Clipper controlling the movements, of the printer to keep it fast and accurate. But even with a printer this fast, the stepper motors are actually incredibly quiet. But once that huge blower fan starts up, oh man, will you know about it? True to their word, it did finish at the 25 minute mark and well, it's white, so we can't see any details, so I tried it again in a blue PLA plus, and yeah, that's a pretty nice looking Benchy. Okay, so how do we load up our own prints onto this thing? Wirelessly, the interface is excellent. It's a responsive touch screen running fluid, and the menu navigation is okay-ish. Some icons are smaller than they need to be or hard to understand, and some macros such as load and unload filament aren't currently configured, but this is pre-release, so it's not a big deal. Everything is configurable through the web interface, which is entirely local area network only no cloud here. You just look up your network, put in the password, and then put in the printer's IP address using any browser on any device also on that network, and bam, you're good to go. It's incredibly easy to do, no account required. From here, you can control every aspect of your printer from preheating to movement commands, alter config files, and the most convenient part, upload and print G-code. Not having to go to the printer to get the SD card, load it up, go back down and start the print again is a convenience I'm rapidly getting used to. When this machine arrived, no printing profile was provided and I had to harvest it from the Benchy G-code in Cura. And you can see why it printed so quickly. For comparison, this is a uh, fast 0.2 millimeter layer height profile for the Ender 3. I tried throwing one of my own models at this profile, but I was quickly disappointed with the print quality. It's super fast, yes, but the PLA wasn't cooling quick enough. The part cooling found in this machine is just as gutless as it was in the SV06. But then I realized it was much quieter than before. That huge blower at the back wasn't spinning up. It turns out that the command to enable it isn't the usual G-code cooling fan command M106, but instead it requires a completely custom command set fan speed fan extruder part fan speed. I don't know. Uh, to turn the fan on, you make it one, and to turn it off, you make it zero in Clipper. My guess is that the Soval engineers just manually added it as a last minute to the demo G-code for the Benchy and said, hey, let's ship it. Do I want to manually edit every G-code file I send? No, I'm lazy. So I spent an entire day building a custom profile from scratch in Prusa Slicer for this 3D printer, and I took advantage of a rarely used feature it offers, G-code substitutions. You see, Clipper support for slicers is only a very new thing, with Prusa Slicer only just adding Clipper as a G-code flavor in their latest beta release. But we can use G-code substitutions to automatically find and replace lines in the exported G-code. So we want this big curtain cooling fan to turn on when the part fan cools on, right? So you find M106 S255 and tell it to replace that with a custom command, turning on when the cooling fan would normally turn on. But just doing that would remove the command for the cooling fan, so it's not ideal. To solve this, I used slash n, which sends the following code to the next line. I left the cooling fan Jigo command in the replacement text, followed by the line break, and then the custom command. It's complicated to explain, but simple to execute, and I don't know if being able to use a line break here is a feature or bug in Prusa Slicer, and I don't know how many other code commands you could conceivably insert here, but it works beautifully. Profile linked in the video description. For my test prints, I played a lot with maxing out print speed, but maintaining the best print quality. And even with the huge extent of blower, cooling was still the major bottleneck here. It required layer speed slowdowns on delicate parts. So my profile isn't quite as fast as a Cura Speed Benchy, but it's still pretty quick. But anyway, let's check out some of my favorite prints off the SV07. And we'll start with that 25 minute Benchy. So like I said, the white PLA provided doesn't show any details. 
So I printed the same file again in a blue PLA plus and the result was stunning. It's an incredibly good benchy, let alone the fact that it was a uh, so-called speed benchy. 0.2 millimeter layer heights, it's flawless. The top infill has filled in properly. The sides of the hull look good. And even the little chimney at the top looks very clean as well, which is a testament to that huge curtain blower fan. And I actually even tried in a two-tone shiny filament as well. And again, this looks really, really good with just a little bit of wispiness, but I think that's more the filament than the machine because otherwise the result is exactly the same. Next up, I threw a little XYZ cube at the machine. This is just a little cube I did to test uh, ghosting and print accuracy. And I would say hard corners seem to be rounded slightly, but otherwise it's a very, very clean result indeed. And next up we have this owl, which is one of my favorite large test prints to test print detail. And it looks fantastic as well. There's no evidence of the tips of the ears melting or deforming. And that back area, there's actually a lot of facets there. It's not actually a curve, because remember STL files are triangles. So what the printer's done is sort of, it sort of looked like it's rounded over those facets compared to some other printers when I print this file that show the facets very clearly. So obviously there's some smoothing going on with this machine and its current config. And also I did change filament early on. That routine worked totally fine. You can see it's almost a seamless change between the blue and the gray. Really, really good print this. Then next up, one of my all time favorites, the Geyer Anderson Cat. This is again done in a shiny two-tone filament and it looks awesome. Uh, the organic supports at a Prucha Slicer pulled away no problem and is such a smooth result. Interestingly, it seems the filament sort of twists a little bit on itself as it goes along. You can see the back has those sort of gradients, but it's a very, very smooth finish. And even the head looks great. This is printed at 0.15 millimeter layer heights. And then to torture test this machine, I threw my lattice cube torture test at it. It actually printed almost perfectly. Now I did have to slow the printer down quite a bit. I used auto cooling in Prusa Slicer to make sure each layer had time to cool. But yeah, it is actually one of the best looking lattice torture cubes I've ever done. You can see in these macro shots that the top layers are flawless, but even the bottom layers look almost flawless. And I tried again in a different brand of PLA Plus in purple, and it was almost exactly the same. So in terms of small details, if you're willing to slow down a little bit, that extra cooling you get from the curtain blower is really, really beneficial in this case. Then I threw my clearance castle at the machine, and considering it did so well in the lattice cube torture test, it's not surprising that it passed this as well. The bridging is fantastic with the drawbridge, and it lowers no problem. Then the tower can be removed, and finally the port colors pulled out. So the print quality is wonderful in this model, but I will say there's a few wisps and I think it's because of the PLA I used, not the printer, because I've been having the same sort of uh, effect on other printers. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Then finally, I wanted to really torch test the printer. So I threw some flexibles at it. Now I know that the SVO6 extruder handled flexibles pretty well, but because this is a fast printer, I really want to see how fast I could print flex. So I started with a cube that did have auto cooling in place. Pretty interesting to actually see the VFAs, the vertical fine artifacts, if that's the correct term for it, on this print as the print speed changes, because you will notice that certain artifacts will creep into print quality as you change speeds. But considering they printed this cube, no problem, I thought, why not try to break the printer by sending the 25 minute G code, but with semi-flex. This is Fibrology Fiberflex. I believe it's 40D. So it's not super, super soft. But again, this is a Benchy, a 25 minute Benchy in semi-flex. And I fully expected the printer to fail, but it didn't. It actually finished. And all things considered, it's a pretty impressive, flexible 25 minute benchy. Most of the print looks really, really good. There are areas where cooling was clearly not sufficient, but I've seen similar benchies printed in just PLA where cooling wasn't sufficient. Keep in mind, this is a flexible benchy, and I'm super keen to throw more flexible prints at this machine going forwards now that I know it can print them so far. So the SV07, should you get one? I have a popular video course about purchasing 3D printers and I discuss the concept of good, fast and cheap, pick two. This is the classic way of measuring up decisions and something you really need to be aware of when machines like this show up on the market because you don't want what's hyped or popular at the time to affect your rational purchasing decisions, right? At US 399, currently discounted to just 339, the SV07's pricing is roughly in line with the BQ Huracan for much of the same features. However, Sovel was smart to continue with their excellent direct-driven hotend for print speed, material capability, like you saw with the flexible print quality, and accuracy, only 0.5 millimeter of retraction, tiny. And although it's poorly implemented, that huge blower fan really does speed up part cooling 
And with the little dodgy G-cut substitution, we've integrated it into the slicer, no problem. These are all features that were lacking in the BQ Huracan and really hobbled it, even though it had Clipper installed just like this machine does. On the other hand, if you're on an ultra budget, then print speed is unlikely to be much of a concern and you could just get a much cheaper i3 variant like an Ender 3 V2 and print slower, but with much the same print quality once you dial it in. Alternatively, if you already have an older i3 running Marlin or similar firmware, you could just retrofit it with Clipper with products like the Creality Sonic Pad or Big Tree Tech Pad 7 and get the same speed and connectivity shown here for just a small upgrade price. However, on the complete other end of the spectrum, if you want speed and quality and time is money, well, just grab a Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon or P1P. The different mechanical design results in much more accurate parts and even higher print speeds right out of the box. But it comes at a significant cost difference compared to something like this. Beyond all that, however, the SV07 really does represent pretty good value for what you get. A fully capable web interface and a printer that performs as good as this for the price point doesn't come along every day. And I would know, I've reviewed a heck of a lot of i3 3D printers here on Maker's Muse. I just kind of wish Sovel kept the linear rods in this case. And also just one final note, the SV06 is open source, which is really cool. And I do hope the SV07 follows that trend, but as yet it's unconfirmed. If you want my custom profile for the SV07 in Prusa Slicer, it's linked below. You do need the latest Prusa Slicer 2.6.0 beta or higher to use it. And if you found this review useful, then maybe consider subscribing because the next video we'll be discussing why you shouldn't buy an Ender 3 in 2023. It's going to get pretty spicy and you're going to want to bring along some popcorn. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.